a different world with its own rules. I've been in a few fights. We settle things here in seconds. Locked up and punished. One more mistake and you're finished. All this behind bars. Gangs. Violence. Drugs. Harassment. A daily struggle for survival. In the toughest prisons in the world. Zenica in Bosnia, the country's fourth biggest city, with a population of 115,000. A place where poverty is rife, with unemployment at 15%, even 30% among young people, and with a tragic history. In the 90s, war raged in Bosnia. Three ethnic groups following different religions fought for supremacy. The outcome? Bombed out towns and cities, and several hundred thousand dead. Zanitsa has not recovered. The economy is at rock bottom. 15% Catholics, 30% Orthodox, and 50% Muslims. Three different religious groups still battle for power. Zanitsa is a powder keg. A situation also evident in Zanitsa's prison. Located in the middle of the city, like a separate neighborhood, it is Bosnia's largest and toughest prison. Built in 1886, the structure has survived more than a century of occupations and wars thus far. A new day in Zenica, with new inmates. Three to seven offenders arrive here every month unaware of what awaits them. This prisoner is experiencing the final seconds of being on the outside of the walls. From now on, his companions will be guards, cameras, and of course, the other inmates. Vedic Albus Pahic has come straight from court. The verdict, guilty of murder. The sentence, 12 years. Go this way. Keep going. Come on. Newcomer Vedic may only take in personal documents, clothing, and personal hygiene items. Cell phone, jewelry, and valuables are prohibited. They are kept in safekeeping or handed over to the family. Head guard Mohamed Softic takes care to check everything. Are you carrying anything illegal? Nothing. Any drugs? Have you been drinking? No. Okay, we'll do a blood test later. If you have any substances in your body, we'll find out. The guards record everything to know precisely who they are dealing with. This includes passport information and health status, as well as physical features. Any tattoos or scars? Just one of the Yugoslav People's Army. Okay, one tattoo. The Yugoslav People's Army, when it was dissolved in 1992, more than a half a million soldiers were left with nothing. Tensions remain high in Bosnia, a country with a population of three million. Theft, assault, and rape are among the most common crimes. It's sad, but that's life. My first and hopefully only time in jail. Time will tell. I'm guilty. 
I must take responsibility. 28 years of service have left their mark on head guard Muhammad. This guy here isn't making any trouble and is behaving well. But we also get newcomers who are on edge and wound up. They refuse to undress and resist searches. We use force with such people. That means guards are allowed to actively defend themselves when required. After passing through the three security gates of the main entrance, newcomers are first put into solitary confinement. To prevent immediate contact with fellow inmates. A mix of murderers, rapists, and war criminals. All inmates are male. The current total of 550 come from all over the country. They range from petty criminals to those sentenced to years in prison. They all know the procedures and rules. Unlike new inmates, like the convicted murderer of Adich, his first stop, Pavilion 2. To be more precise, one of the solitary confinement cells. This is because guards want newcomers to know that rebelling is pointless. They remain in solitary confinement for a maximum of one day to settle in and to realize that their life of freedom is over, that their future will now be determined by others. Inside is just a window and a bed practically nothing else. Get changed. The basics are two blankets, sheets, soap, and toilet paper. How long a new inmate remains in solitary depends on their behavior. This guy seems okay, but he's been convicted. He's been given 12 years and is guilty. We have no sympathy for such people. Escape is practically impossible for the convicted murderer of Adich, as it is for all the others. The prison walls surround an area of 32,000 square meters and has six watchtowers. The main building is Pavilion 1. The majority of the inmates are in Pavilion 3, 5, and 6. In between are the kitchen and two courtyards for exercise. Pavilion 2 is for detainees in solitary confinement. And then there is Pavilion 4, the most secure building of all, for the most dangerous inmates, a prison within a prison. The buildings located outside the walls are for workers, administration, and infrastructure, and for inmates considered the most harmless, with four release days per month. Finally, there are the barracks, the quarters for guards and prison police. Back to the building for newcomers. After four hours of solitary confinement and observation, the guards transfer the convicted murderer of Adich to a provisional cell, where he will continue to be under close surveillance. Prisoners in Sinitsa are divided into three categories. Group A is for inmates who have committed fairly minor crimes and who have good conduct. Group B to which Vedic belongs is for those committing serious crimes and inmates causing trouble. And Group C is for serial killers, war criminals, and insurgents. Vedic will serve the initial period of his sentence here. The guards want to get to know him better before he is allowed into the main wing. Basic provisions, a simple bed with a thin mattress, a wardrobe, and a TV. However, the 12 square meter cell is not for him alone, but for two inmates. 
I feel sad. I hope for better times and that I will get help. Time outside in the courtyard is limited to just two hours a day. My home. This is my new home. Paradise. Paradise. Three separate doors provide security to the cells. Guards lock in newcomers completely. With good conduct, they will transfer to a wing where they can move around freely, at least within the wing. The prospect of at least a little bit of freedom. Like here, just 10 meters away, as the crow flies. In Pavilion 1, the main building, only the corridor is locked. The cells themselves remain unlocked. A system of privileges. Those doing well get more freedom. The downside, the greater risk of inmates hurting or killing each other. Like Mila and Marian, both convicted of murder. The basics in all cells are the same. Table and chairs, bed, wardrobe, TV. But inmates with good conduct are permitted to work and earn a little money for luxury items like fruit and cookies. Both Mila and Marian work as welders. A bit of normality. The alternative is to wander around the corridor, watch TV, or stare out at the courtyard. Every day is the same. Things just go round in circles. Everything happens at the same pace, and you know the routine, day after day. Part of the routine for inmate Marian is recalling a drunken binge that ended fatally. One night, in a drunken rage, he killed his wife. Only at the moment he kills her does he realize his terrible deed. I woke up and hit out with my fists two or three times. I didn't know it was my wife. Out of fear of losing his privileges, Marian doesn't even consider escape. No wonder, Sanitsa is very well secured. The eastern side of Sanitsa borders a main traffic route, but it is secured by a five meter high prison wall. Behind this is a security perimeter with another five meter high fence. The north side is bordered by a field intentionally. It provides perfect visibility to prevent escape or attacks from the outside. To the west, the walls of a ruined factory act as an extra barrier. Here, too, are miles of barbed wire, tons of steel. And behind it, a 1,300-meter-high mountain, a harsh wilderness, home to hungry bears and wolves. In the south are buildings for the prison police, with extra cameras, extra barbed wire, a steep slope, and extra concrete barriers. All this makes escape impossible from one of the world's toughest prisons. You are fortunate if you are one of the inmates who has a job inside the prison. The siren sounds for the metal and woodworkers at 6 a.m. It also summons the garbage and kitchen staff. Anyone working with dangerous tools is permanently watched, confined, and inspected after work every day. Like in the bakery, Iskar Halilovich's shift is about to end. Iskar belongs to the A group, the more privileged prisoners. The work is hard, but also a privilege. The routine is to wake at four in the morning and be at work by half past four. Work begins at five until 8 a.m. Then we're finished. Sanitsa then provides little in the way of distractions. Fitness training, ball sports, and language classes. 
When I get back from work, I go training. After training, I sleep for two hours, go to lunch, and then I'm in my cell until dinner. That's how it is every day. Isgar earns 100 euros a month, which is transferred to a prison account. A lot of money because a coffee costs just 15 cents. Isgar's home in Tsenitsa is Pavilion 5. The most privileged live here and enjoy more visiting rights than the others. This includes extra visiting time. Inmates typically have just one hour of visiting per month. Those with privileges get three. Isgar even has his own small bathroom offering some privacy, but he never knows when or who will come to visit him. I'm waiting for my mom and sister to visit me soon. It means a lot to me. He has been in Sanitsa, one of the world's toughest prisons, for five years. His crime? Unpremeditated homicide. I was in a bar with a buddy of mine. There was another guy there too. He was causing trouble. My buddy followed him out onto the street, pulled out his pistol and shot him in the leg. I went after him, pulled out my knife and rammed it into his chest. Isgard did not betray his accomplice. While he lives in freedom outside, Isgar rarely sees daylight here. Group A and B inmates all have two hours of yard time each day. The guards let them out one floor at a time and keep the inmates under constant observation. <laughs> the idea is that the fewer inmates in the yard at any one time, the fewer the chances of trouble and also the less smuggling. Newcomers also use a separate yard. Just one wing provides greater freedom, the section for the relatively harmless. Inmates with good conduct can be rewarded with day release for re-socialization, but this also increases the risk of smuggling. We're going to perform a cell search now. First, we're going to send in the sniffer dog, and then we come in after it. Ready? Okay, let's go. The head of prison police is Selmedin Madic, one of the most powerful people in Zenica. He knows from experience that day release from prison is often a security risk for drugs, weapons, and cell phones. Guys, I'll ask you once, do you have anything prohibited in here? This is your final chance to come clean. If we find anything, the sanctions will be severe. Stay silent while we conduct our search and obey our orders. Let's go. The sniffer dog for drugs is trained to detect marijuana, cocaine and heroin the most traded merchandise by the Balkan Mafia. But he finds nothing here, for the time being. Now we're going to search you and your belongings. Empty your pockets. The prison police often find prohibited items, weapons, alcohol, flammable substances, tools items people smuggle into jail after their day release. It's all a kind of test of trust for the inmates too, which some fail. The guards have eyes and ears everywhere, also thanks to the many cameras, surveillance and informers. 
We usually find knives, drugs, phones, sharp objects for defense or weapons to attack others. Zermedin finds nothing here, but a colleague has noticed something suspicious. We got new information that the contraband is hidden in another cell. If they find something there, then all privileges will be lost. The inmates involved are then immediately placed in the high security section, a place that all here fear. Pavilion 4 the securest block in the whole of Sanitsa, with two extra fences and barbed wire barricades, a prison within a prison. The man who calls the shots here is Bor Shoko, a highly decorated civil servant, six foot five and weighing 290 pounds. He's been working in the prison's most dangerous block for many years and knows exactly how to ensure maximum security. We ensure security by controlling the prisoners and their movements. Inmates here are segregated. All their actions and movements are checked and are under constant surveillance. The prisoners in Pavilion 4 are a mix of Bosnia's most dangerous men, mainly war criminals and serial killers. Then there are those who don't keep to the prison rules. Pavilion 4 is their punishment. During a check of this prison cell, for example, the prisoner was clearly uneasy. So I went in to see what his problem was. I noticed he was holding an object in his hand. I had no idea what it was at the time. He suddenly went for my throat with the object. He tried to kill me. We reacted instantly and overpowered him. The inmates on this block have no contact with the rest of the prison. They also have a bed, table, and wardrobe. But their doors are always locked, and for 23 hours a day, they are not allowed out. They even have to eat in isolation. Their only freedom, the one-hour yard time. Their potential for aggression is high. To do this job, you not only need physical but also mental strength. Sometimes you have to be smart and not use physical force. But in any situation, I always expect a physical confrontation. Time for the next inspection. Boris has the cells checked every hour. Look in every cell and check what the situation is and what the prisoners are doing, whether they are sitting or lying on their beds. Warn them if they are lying down. Go. Lying down during the day is not allowed throughout the entire prison. This ensures inmates will be tired in the evening and will then sleep at night. but the prison police have harsher measures. In Pavilion 2, Boris inspects a very special device that everyone here is proud of. Using a self-made toilet construction, the guards randomly monitor the inmates' bowel movements. If drug smuggling is suspected, the excrement of the person concerned is collected in a fine mesh metal sieve. 
We also check inmates here who have been on day release and allowed into town or home for the weekend. They are often blackmailed by other inmates not allowed such privileges. They're told to smuggle drugs in. If we have valid concerns, then we bring the person here. Any drug packets that have been swallowed then get stuck in the sieve. Next door is another special facility for prisoners, an isolation cell. You end up here for any kind of aggression, whether against guards or other inmates. We put inmates in here who are exceptionally aggressive and disrespectful of the prison rules. Such people are difficult to manage in large groups, so we isolate them in this cell. The walls here are made of rubber so that the prisoner can't hurt himself. A straitjacket is used to bring the person under control. We restrain them to prevent them from hurting themselves or others. The psycho cell. The rubber surfaces have gradually been ripped off by inmates. Dirt and excrement are evidence of absolute despair. On the few sharp edges, inmates have attempted to free themselves, to slit their wrists, or to smash in their heads. The psycho cell in Sanitza one of the toughest prisons in the world. The southern part of the complex is occupied by the so-called barracks. This is the base for the guards and special anti-riot squad. Training takes place away from the prison walls, away from the eyes and ears of the inmates. No one should know about the deployment strategies. The special squad is always on standby in case of riots or fights. They are only armed with shields, handcuffs, and batons. The rest is pure muscle power. Training takes place two to three times a week. Get ready. Team one, move in. Team two, go. Physical fitness is essential. Everyone in the squad undergoes regular checks. The last riot was in 2003. Inmates barricaded their block, scaled the roof, and set it on fire. It took 12 days and a force of 150 men to end it. The prison management learned lessons from it and de-escalate situations, not only with force, but also with relatively good food. The principle, full stomachs prevent rioting. The canteen, therefore, has lots to offer. All inmates get three free meals a day, potatoes, rice, pasta, but also meat, cheese, vitamins, and dessert. The prison spends around 50 euros a month on food per inmate. Anything extra, inmates must buy in the prison store with their own money. Candy bars start at 30 cents. A pack of cigarettes costs 2 euros 50. Payment is made by coupons, which are purchased with real money. One of the helpers providing the relatively good food here is the convicted thief, Vikovic Jevat. He's been here for four years. His privilege, a job in the kitchen, but it causes envy. If things aren't going good for you, then they shouldn't be going good for others. That's how about 80% of the people here think. Vikovic used to incite riots. His punishment? solitary confinement. He has adapted and now follows the rules. The system worked and he has learned his lesson. 
His prison job earns him 100 euros a month, one-seventh of the average Bosnian income. But he worries that he'll soon be back inside after his release. I hope I won't return here, but it's something I can't promise because I don't know what to expect on the outside. Maybe I'll stay out of here, maybe I won't. You just never know. Vikovic's current prospects, working in the canteen for another two years and four months. But his prospects outside the prison walls are even less. The city of Tsenica does have a steel plant as a potential employer. But Bosnia is the seventh most corrupt country in Europe. Many say that you're more likely to get a tumor than get a job because of the pollution from industry. After corruption, drug use and drug trafficking are the major problems. The consequences of which lead here, one of the toughest prisons in the world. The cell of convicted thief Vikovic is on the third floor of Pavilion One. In his sparse cell with a hard bed, Basic equipment includes a TV and a simple wooden wardrobe. This is Vikovic's second time here. Before he went to jail, he was up to his neck in debt because he had a low-paying job and refused to work himself to death. I needed money, but I didn't want to work myself to death. So I looked around for someone who had money. People knew a pensioner who had savings. I attacked him in his house and stole everything he had. The spoils of the theft, 1,800 euros. The verdict, guilty. The sentence, six and a half years. Vikovic takes advantage of the few freedoms he has, such as smoking in the common room. He expects to reoffend as soon as he is free again, and is already thinking about the next robbery. I'll do it my own way. I've thought about starting something again, but you can't do it alone. The people I know would back down. Heck, there's nothing left in the banks. There's no money in Bosnia. Hey, you shut up, I'm talking. You should show some respect. After this exchange, Vikovic may have a new enemy on his wing. Rivalries get especially dangerous at night. Time for the inspection rounds by Zelmedin and Muhammad. At night and on weekends, fewer prison police officers work. The potential for trouble, therefore, increases. Despite all the measures, prisoners keep trying to escape. In the latest incident, escapees took a hostage in the infirmary as day was breaking. They then attempted to escape by ambulance. Only government special forces were able to stop them. It's very important that we're here at nighttime to keep security high. Inmates then know that we are monitoring them all the time, ensuring the highest possible level of security. Prison police officers and patrols work regularly at night. They also lock indoor corridors and outdoor doors, as well as connecting corridors. As soon as the last prisoners have eaten dinner, prison police count inmates, and then it's off to the cells. Maximum isolation of the inmates is now important to prevent smuggling as well as violence under the cover of darkness. And it's not just about the inmates.
Senior guards are also on watch, checking their own colleagues as well. There are always guards who have misused their power. These undergo disciplinary proceedings, but so far there have been no criminal charges. One thing is clear, any night can become a nightmare for everyone and one of the toughest prisons in the world. Any evidence of someone who might cause trouble? We can provide support. We don't need anyone at the moment. Everything is under control. Okay. All right. See you later. Keep up the good work. Good night. The shift finishes, and now begins nighttime silence. At 10 p.m., the lights go out in Sanitsa. The inmates don't even have control over the light switches. Guards switch off the power at midnight. Sanitsa, a fortress built in 1886, has survived many rebellions, escape attempts, and two world wars. But every single night remains a challenge. A new day, which first means a change of shifts for the prison police. Guards report for duty every day to keep the largest prison in Bosnia and the former Yugoslavia secure within its five and a half meter high walls. None carry firearms. This is to prevent weapons getting into the hands of the inmates. Guards keep firearms in only one secret location, in a safe. Weapons include M4 automatic assault rifles, The only permanently armed guards are in the towers. A total of six towers surround the prison. The towers resemble bunkers and are accessible only from outside the prison. There is no way to access the towers or the weapons from within the prison walls. From up here, the guards can see into every corner of the prison. A breakout would be extremely dangerous. And if an inmate does try, the guards have clear orders. To shoot without hesitation. Bosnian law allows it. Even the section for the more harmless prisoners is within reach of the tower guards. The inmates there are let out regularly. And they regularly smuggle in illegal goods, from weapons to drugs. Boss Selmedin and his team of investigators are following up on a hot lead. We have new information that the drugs should be in there. In here? Exactly. They believe an inmate who was on cleaning duty is hiding illegal goods. And this storage room used by prison staff. A job for the sniffer dog. Who instantly finds something. But what is it? The prison police follow strict protocols when carrying out investigations and must always double check. Dual control by two officers is required. Here is a box. Okay, what's in the box? Two grams of marijuana have been found. Good news for the search team, but very bad news for the person who smuggled in and hid the weed. The evidence is clear. 
the prison police instantly apprehend the inmate who was observed at the scene of the crime. Because we have reasonable suspicion that you have committed multiple serious violations, you will be taken to Pavilion 4. I'm innocent. Young man, keep out of it. We know what we're doing. But he's not guilty. Handcuff him and take him away. Re-socialization has again failed. The inmate has re-offended, despite privileges such as day release. So he will instantly lose all his privileges and will be punished. There will be no contact with other inmates from now on. Solitary confinement under constant surveillance. Awaiting him is the prison within the prison. We have removed him from his cell. We will now lock him up in Pavilion 4 because of what he's done. Locked up with war criminals, serial killers, and rapists. Stand there. Hello, colleague. Hello. The person has committed a range of serious offenses. We have brought him here for you to accommodate him. Do you want me to lock him up in here? Exactly that. Solitary confinement lasts five, seven, 10, 15, or even 20 days, depending on the offense. Drug smuggling is serious. He is sure to get the maximum. If you continue to violate disciplinary rules, proceedings will be initiated against you. Do you understand me? Yes. His life is now one of solitary confinement, 23 hours a day. He will also have to eat from a tray from now on in his cell. His visitation rights will also be reduced to a minimum. The building for visits is located near the entrance area. Behind two security gates begins the realm of guard Emma Imsirovich. Previously a rifle shooter for the Bosnian national team, now a security guard. She presides over five visiting rooms. Her job is not too stressful. Many inmates have only one visitation time slot per month and for just 60 minutes. If the visitor cannot come, inmates are allowed to use the 60 minutes for a video call. Only inmates with good behavior and minor offenses are eligible for privileges. For these privileged people, there is even a room for sex. People arriving here are often drunk, and they make trouble. Of course, that's absolutely forbidden. They then get thrown out by the prison police and are not allowed to return. Prisoners like convicted murderer Isgar never know if and when visitors will come. They get told at short notice. It's a rare highlight for him. His visitors come from Bosnia's capital, Sarajevo. The journey takes 45 minutes and incurs highway tolls. Visitors are also allowed to bring prisoners up to seven kilos of food, but not in glass or tetra packaging. It means so much to me when my mother and sister visit. Apart from those two, no one visits Iskar in here. It is the only chance he gets to hear family news. Under the eyes of the cameras and guard, he soaks up every single syllable. 
My life has come to a standstill. I lost my father too, but my brother? That was worse. I found my father dead and didn't cry, but I did for my brother. Now my whole life is about getting him out. It is less than one meter to the other side, but the world on the other side of the partition remains out of reach. He has already served five years and has seven years still to serve. After the 60 minutes is up, it's back to monotony. All he has left of the visit are cookies and crossword puzzles from the outside world until the next visit, if it comes. Until then, he will be spending his time in Sanitsa with the same 550 inmates as in the years before. But Isgar isn't giving up. I want to find a girlfriend, get married, have children and a normal job. And convicted wife murderer Marian intends to get more privileges. If I can get through the next five and a half years, then I'll be out. But I need to keep myself fit. Head of prison police Elmedin remains ready for anything. Physical violence towards us or other inmates is a constant threat, or prison property gets damaged. Muhammad and his colleagues want to keep one step ahead of the prisoners. The most important rule is keeping the inmates under surveillance. That's everyday routine for us. Boris will severely punish rule breakers and isolate them for weeks. Extreme situations will always occur, attacks against us or self-harm. And convicted murderer Mila will keep blaming himself for the next 10 years. To be honest, if I'd had the sense then that I have now, I would never have ended up here. Just that moment where I didn't think, when I was just neck high in it all, and then it was all over. Convicted thief Vikovic has only two and a half years left to serve and is already making plans on how to get hold of money then. It's difficult to reconnect outside. I will try, but you know how that will end. They all have one thing in common, a life of monotony without prospects, no chance to get away from everything here. War criminals, murderers, rapists, all crammed together in a fortress built in 1886. The path they have chosen has brought them to Bosnia's largest prison, Zenica, one of the toughest prisons in the world.